Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, I'm attending a media event for the new Camaro convertible and 2 liter turbo model. Chevrolet's got a packed day for us here at Spring Mountain Motorsports Ranch in Pahrump, Nevada, including an autocross course and extended public road drives of the entire Camaro lineup. If you'd like to see more in-depth coverage on the SS Coupe, be sure to check out my in-depth review and pure sound videos, the links of which can be found in the top right hand corner of this video. I've never been here before and am beyond excited to share this experience with you guys and check out some sweet cars. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright everyone, we're on the west side of the track at Spring Mountain getting ready to do the little handling experience that Chevrolet has set up. There's a bunch of cars out there right now. There's the 6th gen V6, a 5th gen V6 for comparison, as well as a Mustang V6. So, it should be a lot of fun. There's also the 2 liter turbo coupe and we'll try to hop in all of them, put the GoPro on the head and get a little bit of POV driving. All right, so basically everybody is working through a rotation. There's four cars running right now. There's the Mustang V6, there's a V6 5th gen, there's a, a six-speed manual two-liter turbo and the eight-speed automatic two-liter turbo. The um, sixth gen V6 cars are all lined up over there, so we'll be driving those a little bit later. Here comes the fifth gen right now. But yeah, we're all queued up, ready to go. Yeah, no problem. 
Pretty fun, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm still pretty new to the the uh, the track scene, so it's, no worries. Take your time, have fun. This is a lot of fun for sure. All right, guys, the drives out back are starting to wind down. There's a few like last minute requests and all that good stuff, but we're about to hop in all the different cars for the journey down to Death Valley. I was lucky enough to score the white on white SS convertible, which I'm super excited about. So I'll give you guys a little bit more of an in-depth tour at one of our stops, but this one has the dual mode exhaust system and everything. It's gonna be quite nice with the top down. Oh yes. Alright guys, we are leaving Spring Mountain right now, about to begin our 87 mile journey to Death Valley where we'll stop and have lunch and change out cars for something else. It's going to be a nice day, beautiful weather outside. All right, guys, we're 13 miles into our journey. I had to stop over right quick to show you these breathtaking mountains all the way around us. This is gonna be a very scenic drive and I've put a GoPro on top of the windshield header so you can just see some of the sights along the way. But I mean, it really is just awe-inspiring out here. Just desert for miles, big mountains, clear blue skies. Could not have asked for a better day to take this car out. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize for all the wind noise. I mean, we're in a brand new Camaro convertible driving through Death Valley. It's beautiful out here. Um, so we gotta experience this car to the fullest, you know. One thing that would be really nice to have, I'm not sure if Camaro ever has or will offer, but having a wind blocker that goes over the rear seats right here. I know the Buick Cascada Premium that I uploaded recently has the option of one. Um, a lot of premium convertibles have it, but it would make a huge difference with wind rustling and stuff in here, which when the windows are up, it's not bad. I mean, typical convertible and stuff, but it would make like the interior a lot calmer when you're cruising around at highway speeds. But honestly, to anyone not doing a vlog like I am, that probably doesn't matter at all. <laughs> Just allows you to hear me a little bit better. All right, so let's talk about the SS convertible a little bit more in depth. Obviously, I've covered the coupe a lot more previously, so pretty much everything with that you can attribute to this, including the all-new chassis structure, the engine, wheels, tires, brakes, suspension, I mean, you name it. The difference with the convertible, at least compared to the fifth generation, is definitely weight. It's 275 pounds lighter with the SS, and with the new structure being a lot stiffer and stuff, the convertible has 10% greater torsional rigidity than the fifth generation, so it's going to be more agile, it's going to feel more responsive, it's going to feel a lot more solid, especially over broken pavement. I've had a lot of experience with the coupe, and honestly, so far, I haven't noticed anything different with the ride quality and the overall handling behavior of the vehicle. It drives fantastic. And this particular example has the magnetic ride suspension, so you can put it in different modes. You can firm it up in track mode or leave it in tour mode like I have right now. You can also customize the dual mode exhaust to be in track mode while you're in tour mode with this and, and sport mode for steering. So there's a lot of customizable uh, driving aspects to it as well. But what I really like, I mean, I'm a huge fan of convertibles. I love the coupe, don't get me wrong. Uh, obviously, there's going to be blind spots and stuff with the rear pillar, like with the fifth generation Camaro. It's a little bit better, but still, I mean, it's, a, it's an intimate environment. But with the convertible, I mean, it's all open air. So you get everything. You get the same 6.2 V8 to the LT1 with 455 horsepower, 455 torque. It's still just stupid fast. And this dual mode exhaust system is just ridiculously entertaining. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. I absolutely love this car. I mean, I've driven all the Mustangs and stuff while there. An awesome ride as well. Obviously, everything boils down to personal preference. I personally enjoy the way the Camaro drives a bit better. I like the way the transmission feels. The clutch has great feedback to it. I mean, it's awesome. There's aspects of the Mustang that I like a little bit better. Um, I think the interior is a little bit more artsy and stuff. I like that retro style, how it continued. The Camaro's interior is worlds different compared to the fifth generation. It doesn't have those retro cues and stuff, but the build quality, the fit and finish, the pattern materials and stuff is just first rate. 
Um, I mean, especially in the 2SS. The 1SS that I got to take on the Find New Roads media event back in October or so, it didn't have some of the soft touch material across the door panels that this one does, but I mean, especially in this spec with the white on white, bows, magnetic ride, and everything like that, it feels like a downright or like a luxury car. It gives me the feeling of, of what I like about like the Charger SRTs and stuff. You've got that classic American muscle, but you have the refinement and the comfort that you would expect out of a luxury car, which makes it a really well rounded daily driver, I think. And even though, I mean, most new cars nowadays, especially this, I mean, they don't come cheap, but I really do believe you pay for what you get, especially in the long run with, I mean, the features, the overall comfort, the infotainment system, and it's a very modern car. One of the reasons I wanted to take you guys on this trip is it's, it's not often that I get to go to these press events, not because I don't get invites necessarily, but it's really hard to film in-depth reviews on an event like this where it's really fast paced, there's a ton of journalists there rotating through cars, and basically it's just, it's a ride and drive event. You hop in, you go, you go back home, and you write your article for like first drive reviews and stuff like that. So to do something long form like me, it's it's a little bit difficult. So by doing these vlog videos and stuff, I can bring you guys and kind of immerse you in the experience of it and, and show you what the event is all like and everything. And we get to check out some sweet stuff at the same time. I mean, the reason that I picked this V8 convertible over a 2-liter turbo coupe and the, the V6 convertible, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm a diehard V8 guy, and I hope I get some extended time in the V6 and the turbo sometime today. We should be switching cars around lunchtime, but I, I'm almost thinking, too, maybe perhaps we can get a press vehicle later, too, and experience those uh, more in-depth, because if I was going to buy a car like this, it would be this car. So this is the one that I've wanted to really get more comfortable with. And I mean, honestly, if you have the means for it, the convertible is by far the way to go. Without looking at the raw specs, I wouldn't expect that the weight difference is that much. I would say an average of convertibles over coupes is maybe 150, 200 pounds. I don't know if that's too heavy, too light of an estimate. I don't know, but convertibles are typically a little bit heavier due to the extra chassis reinforcements and stuff to keep everything nice and solid so you don't get any like chassis shake and stuff by chopping the roof off. But in normal driving and stuff, you're not going to notice a difference at all. Um, you might notice a difference on a track, but I mean, a convertible isn't a track car to begin with, so uh, it really it really boils down to your personal preference and stuff. But combining the open air experience with all of this power and the amazing sound and exhaust, I just cannot think of a better way to cruise around than a convertible like this. Probably one of the coolest things too with the six speed is the fact that you have active rev matching just like on the Corvette. So going to fifth, fourth, third, second, first. It makes it so effortless. Obviously you can you can turn it off and rev match yourself, but it's amazing that we live in a time where we can invent something like that, implement it properly. <laughs> think it's awesome that Chevrolet offers this performance exhaust system. I mean, it only costs around a thousand bucks, which honestly is cheaper than some aftermarket exhaust, depending on where you go. But you get an exhaust that's flexible. It's amazingly aggressive in track mode and super quiet in tour mode. So, and there's, there's other modes too. And I, like I said, I talked about that in the pure sound video. I mean, just listen to this thing start up and rev in track mode. It's amazingly addictive. about this car in general as far as convertibles are concerned is the soft top itself 
it's made of like multi-layer materials so you have like the weather portion you have an acoustic layer so it's pretty quiet when the top is up and i'll show you that in just a second but it's a completely electric system there's no handle or anything like that up here uh, like where the windshield is that you would have to grab and unlock or lock back so all you have to do is just press this little button right above the rear view mirror and it totally does everything by itself which is really nice for convenience it also works up to 30 miles an hour so if you get caught in a rainstorm and you're driving down the road or so you can just slow down below 30 miles an hour and do it that way which is also very nice my favorite thing about the whole electric mechanism in general is the fact that chevrolet added a hard tonneau cover back there instead of that vinyl um, like soft boot cover type thing that you would uh, affix over the back to cover all the convertible top mechanisms so this is a lot simpler it's not cumbersome at all like the other one might have been it's all tied into the same button up here so when the top is up and you want to put it down just hold it it lifts up goes out over the trunk deck lid creates the opening everything falls in and then it comes back in place it creates a nice seamless smooth silhouette to where you're ready for open top motoring and everything looks really pretty at the same time and the top cover is also color coded to match the car which is another nice touch kind of continuing that that whole theme and makes the rear deck look a lot longer than it really is i also like too the the middle portion of the back seat is just a little bit different from the coupe there's actually a little uh, camaro like uh logo etched in between the seats back there which is another nice little touch the other um the rest of the interior as far as i can tell is pretty much identical the only other difference that i, I know for certain is on the door panel right here where you have your power window switches you also have a button where you can control the um the two rear windows so they're all independent of each other and they're all fully automatic which is also very nice like a lot of convertibles probably the biggest downside of the camaro convertible is going to be trunk space you obviously have less than what you would have in the coupe i'd guesstimate when the top is down you have about half of what you would be able to use otherwise um, so you trade a little bit of practicality for the open air enjoyment which is definitely fine i mean you have the back seat space for storage if you need it um, but what i think is pretty cool back there too they had this clip on cover that like snaps in in four different spots to prevent your cargo from sliding forward and underneath the top in the event of hard braking or something like that so it keeps everything nice and secure when you are driving around with the top down and have to run an errand right quick I've been to a handful of press drives in the last few years, but this has to be one of the most unique. I've never seen an area that was just so flat, so desolate, so quiet. Thankfully, it's not too hot today, but <laughs> this is just absolutely breathtaking. I mean, the mountains are so cool. I mean, it's not like the most crazy topography, but just the fact that it's just, it's so open. Nice and 
does a good job at making the Camaro feel a much more well-rounded of a vehicle. Not to say that it doesn't ride good to begin with. The first Camaro I ever drove, that yellow 1SS, it didn't have magnetic ride, and it drove fantastic. This drives better, especially in tour setting, which I have it in right now. It's very comfortable, very soft. It's still tight feeling, and it handles a corner well. I mean, you don't really notice any body roll, but we haven't taken it on any hairpins or anything like that. Uh, we'll save that for hopefully a press vehicle later. But in general, it just it's very well composed and it makes it a nice highway cruiser. Put it in sport, it firms up a little bit. Track is full on aggression, very, very stiff. It's not punishing, but it could be a little uncomfortable on some rougher roads and stuff. But if you're on a smooth, twisty road through the mountains or countryside or something, track is definitely going to be a nice thing to have as it pretty much eliminates body roll from a normal everyday driver's perspective. All right, we are entering the Death Valley National Park now. Gosh, so cool. I imagine we're going to get some twisty roads in just a little bit. So now with the top up, we can listen to interior noise levels and see how they compare to the coupe. I mean, initial impressions, I've been driving it around for a few miles with the top up, and I would say it's very close to the coupe. It's not that far off. If anything, that's just a little bit more wind noise. I don't hear any rustling over the top at all, and I know it has like the acoustic layer and, and all that good stuff, but it's, it's very well insulated. The only wind noise that I can barely hear is maybe around the side view mirrors. It is a little bit windy today um, and maybe a little bit towards the back, but compared to some of the other convertibles I've driven recently, I mean, a lot of you know I bought that uh, 95 Saab 900 that I'm going to be using for that video series um, in the upcoming months, you know, the convertible. That car, or compared to that car, this is like riding in a Cadillac or a Mercedes. It's so quiet. <laughs> so it's, it's quite awesome how far convertibles have come as far as noise and stuff are concerned. All right, guys, so we're about to get to our final destination where we'll grab a quick bite to eat, get out of the car, and relax for a little bit. We'll be picking up another car on the way back. I'm not really sure if it's going to be a 2-liter turbo coupe or a V6 convertible yet. Uh, but, yeah, it's always nice to have a surprise every now and then. <laughs> All right guys, we stopped over at Zabriskie Point right quick. We just finished up with lunch and I saw this little overlook on the way over here and I just had to stop over and just check out this spectacular view. Just unreal. Nature is just incredible sometimes. All right, guys, we're all full up with lunch. Got an 87-mile journey back to the Spring Mountain Motorsports Ranch, basically retracing our steps to the route we took before. I swapped out the Camaro SS convertible I was driving for the new 2-liter turbo coupe, so basically polar opposite. I've really been looking forward to driving this car uh, for quite a while, so I'm glad I was able to snag this one and snag it by myself um, so we can have a little bit of fun with it and so uh, more personal time for in-depth content. But like the Mustang EcoBoost, this has the two liter turbo four cylinder. It competes in the same class as probably like, I don't know, Scion FRS, Subaru BRZ, Ford Focus ST, um, you know, stuff like that, little, little turbocharged sports cars. It's not a four cylinder muscle car and I can't stand when people make that association. Like, like the Mustang EcoBoost is not a four cylinder muscle car. The GT is the muscle car. It's a turbocharged sports car. It, just, it, it, almost, it competes in a different class, so once you get over the fact that, oh, it's a muscle car with a four-cylinder, you start to really appreciate how cool this is for someone who may not be able to afford the GT or doesn't need the GT or just wants a turbocharged four-cylinder. I don't know. So it just kind of broadens the customer base a little bit. And you know what? It's, it's a really fun car, actually. I was asking some of the engineers some questions and whatnot and how this car relates to the Cadillac ATS Coupe. Um, that I drove last year and the Camaro's chassis and stuff is a little different I think it's based on the same principle but the dimensions I think the Camaro is a little bit wider and this car has a more aggressive camber angle as well so um, designed more for like cornering and 
stuff like that. So it's this car is built to be more of a sports car than the Cadillac. The engine, on the other hand, is very similar. I think the Cadillac's engine makes 272 horsepower or so. This makes 275. I mean, it, the difference is almost negligible. Torque is 295 pound-feet. Um, I think the only things that are really different, um, perhaps the induction system and, and um, little things like that, but in hardware, big mechanical bits, uh, I think they're basically the same. As far as boost pressure, I think it's running about 18 PSI or so. Um, it's, it's a quick little car. This one also has the 8-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters. This is the first time I've actually driven an automatic Camaro. Um, this gearbox is a little bit different than the one in the V8. I think the one in the V8 is a bit beefier to handle all that extra power. But the transmission is very responsive. It's got rev matching downshifts. Um, so, I mean, the manual is a lot of fun as well. But the automatic, I mean, you're not sacrificing driving enjoyment that much unless you just prefer to have, you know, that control of the gearbox and everything like that. But this is a very fine transmission. One thing I'm pretty impressed about with this car is how good it actually sounds for a factory 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder. Like I talked about in my Mustang EcoBoost review, you can check that link out in the top right-hand corner of the video, that car uses electronic sound enhancement because the engine is so quiet, you had to use basically the audio system to, to boost up that sound to give it a more aggressive and, and appealing note for the type of car and class that it's in. It does have an engine sound management system though, like the SS with the, the dual mode exhaust system and all that good stuff. There's only two modes, there's auto and off. Auto is tied to the drive modes, there's snow, ice, there's tour, and sport. Only the SS gets track, if I remember correctly. Um, I haven't noticed a huge difference, but the way I think it works is that it's a variable induction system. So under harder acceleration, depending on which drive mode that you're in, it'll pipe in some extra sound and stuff here and there because it sounds a lot more coming from up front than it does from at the exhaust. So it doesn't have some sort of fancy multi-mode exhaust system like the SS does, which probably would sound pretty good if it, if it did. But it's, it's quite good, so let me cut away right quick and give you a couple um, hard acceleration runs and you can see how it sounds for yourself and I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. It's in my DNA. 
but it doesn't stop me from really appreciating stuff like this. And those of you who have seen my Mustang EcoBoost review, I absolutely loved that car. I thought it was a brilliant idea because it attacks a different segment with something totally different from your typical muscle car. No, it's not a four-cylinder muscle car, like I said, but a really well-rounded four-cylinder turbocharged sports car. That's the same thing with the Camaro 2-liter turbo. If you're looking for something in this class and this price point, especially if you're already looking at the EcoBoost, you have to compare it to this car because I really don't think there's a clear-cut winner. I like them both pretty much equally. The EcoBoost that I drove had the performance package, it had a six-speed manual. Um, I haven't had enough time to drive the six-speed um, two-liter turbo Camaro, so I can't really comment on that. But, I mean, just the two cars in general, comparing equipment, comparing driving enjoyment, what you can get with them, and, and just the overall s style of the vehicle. I mean, they're very, very similar. I guess I get overly excited when I see manufacturers starting to step out of the box and do something different. I mean, we've seen the success with the EcoBoost. I imagine the Camaro 2.0-liter turbo is also going to see like-minded success. I also think there's a lot of potential in the aftermarket segment, cranking up the boost, um, like upgrading the internals. I think this will be a really popular car with tuners more so than the V6. So even though this is the entry-level power plant with the least amount of power in the Camaro line, up compared to the EcoBoost, which is actually the mid-range model because it makes more power than the Mustang's V6, you can get pretty much the same equipment on this that you can a loaded 2SS, so you're not sacrificing in comfort or equipment or anything like that, you just have a smaller, more economical engine. There's also very little turbo lag. I haven't noticed much, maybe just a hair, and when you really dig into it, you can hear the turbo whistle start going in the background a little bit, so that's, that's pretty entertaining. But once that boost kicks in, it throws you back in your seat pretty good. Well guys, we're finally back in Pahrump, about to pull into the Spring Mountain Motorsports Ranch. It's been a long day, but a fun day. We've seen some incredible sights. I was so glad I was able to drive this two liter turbo and the SS convertible. I mean, it was it just couldn't have been a better trip. And this, this place, I mean, I hope I get to come back here someday. I mean, the facilities are just wonderful. The track seems quite cool. And um, I know we just got a taste of what this place could offer, so. Fingers crossed we get to come back to another event here someday. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed the road trip vlog with the new Camaro SS convertible and the two liter turbo coupe going up to Death Valley and experiencing all of that. It was just awesome. I'd love to hear your feedback to see if more stuff like this, road trips and everything, would be things you'd like to see more in the future along with the typical in-depth review content. So as always, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care, everybody.